morning guys it is uh, about mid february and we have had a couple of the coldest days basically the coldest days i've ever known in london it was like minus eight um it's just not normal it's just not normal and i'm going to do a plot tour today beautiful sunshine but it's going to be a bit of a change from the january plot tour when i was just in a jumper because i can tell you this coat's not coming off quite a lot of stuff is looking a little bit sad uh, even the brassicas are um limp at the moment i'm expecting them to recover just fine but today everything is looking really really cold <laughs> The chickens look cold. Mum looks really cold. She's hiding in the greenhouse. And uh, so let's just have a bit of a walk around. I'm gonna do what I did the same as last time, start at the other end so we don't have glare on the camera. Got the kettle on, which is very important. So by the time we've done the walk around, there should be a cup of tea waiting for me, which um, will help. <laughs> yeah, it's been absolutely freezing and I haven't been up here for about four days, only uh, to come up and put hot water in the chickens water bowls because they've been iced over um but yeah not actually to do anything and not to have a proper look so it's going to be quite interesting walking around and seeing all the frosty devastation so yeah come on let's go yeah so just up the other end quite a lot of stuff like i said looks really really frozen very unhappy but a lot of it i think it's only temporary like it will bounce back without too much problem some of the other things there's a bit of lettuce damage that i think i think it's time to say goodbye to them but yeah let me show you okay i'm glad the sun's out because if it wasn't this would be unbearably cold so this is the salad bed at the top you can see those kind of black sad looking chaps is the radicio and they look so unhappy they're floppy and really dark and I don't know if you remember last time, this is what they looked like mid-January. Sort of glowing and healthy and bright red. Not like this. These endive have gone. I'm going to have to clear them after this because they're not going to recover. But the celery leaf should. And the lettuces in the top there aren't going to recover either. I'm expecting the radicio to recover. Um, but I guess we will wait and see. Everything's looking a bit, bit of a sad start there. But under here, the, the daffodil bulbs, no problem. They're not worried about the cold at all. These ones are in bud and they're also not worried about the cold. Perfectly happy. Still got quite a lot of manure left over for mulching the beds. Everything in here is just looking all right. I am a bit worried about the gunnera though that's this guy on the end here um they aren't hardy they're, they're pretty hardy but not this not for this temperature i'm slightly concerned that that's going to have um given up but we will wait and see when it warms up the pond is proper frozen properly frozen That piece sticking out, we broke it the other day and it kind of floated up and then it just refroze sticking out. <laughs> yeah, that's quite thick. That is quite thick. Fennel, also looking very sad. I think we'll just pull this today and um, make some soup because I don't think that's going to bounce back. The dahlia bed, the tulips all started coming up when we had the warm weather last month and I was worried about them, but they don't actually look like they've been damaged too much. So fingers crossed they're all all right. Amazingly, the field beans are looking incredibly... All right, Lily. Hello, sweetheart. The field beans are looking pretty sad too. See this one? Look at that. Just like giving up. Giving up. Parsley is actually it doesn't look as bad as i thought it was going to so in the fruit cage this is very sad story i've never seen the tree cabbages look like this look at that just limp and sad poor darlings yeah i'm expecting them to recover though as soon as the cold's over we've got purple sprouting broccoli has just kind of 
started making its presence felt in here. Looking quite lovely. Some more on this little skinny one here. There's a white sprouting cauliflower here that's fallen over and I'm not going to straighten it up today because the ground's frozen, it'll just snap roots under there so I'll leave that alone for the minute. Hello, hello, yeah. Strawberries are looking cold, everything's looking cold. Bertha's definitely looking cold. <laughs> so apricot tree, luckily uh, budding hasn't begun on here yet at all. Let me see if I can find some to show you. It's like, you see the pink starting, but it hadn't come out before we've we've got this cold. So I've still got high hopes for that this year. All my fingers are crossed. Sometimes when we've had real cold and it comes out super early, I do tend to do quite a lot of hand pollinating with this tree just because it's a bit early for the bees and the pollinators to be around. So under here we have got hyacinths, bluebells and fritillaria coming up and some daffs obviously. And sort of a similar mix underneath the fig tree. Everything is starting to come into life. This is the celery and the celeriac, completely flattened by the weather. Not only has it been absolutely freezing, but it's also um, been unbelievably windy at night. So mixture of cold and wind, I think, it's just ripped the moisture out of everything. Spinach is still looking good under here. I mean, it's not really spinach, it's perpetual spinach. So a chard, but it's still looking fine. That's as hardy as anything. Parsnips. That's one thing that will have appreciated the frost, so it'll be really sweet. We've got a load of stuff that's starting to come up in here. I was saying last week about the alliums that are coming up, they're looking fab. And we've got masses of hyacinths and bluebells in here. So that's all starting to do something. Daffs underneath the Cox's Orange Pippin, another very sad looking cabbage tree. Poor thing. They really, really do look sad, don't they? Really sad. So, water butt. Is that, yeah, that's completely solid too. Honeysuckle's not minding the weather though. Tough as old boots. Chard has temporarily collapsed. Don't blame it. The uh, garlic and the shallots just couldn't care less. They look happy as Larry. So that's pretty good. I'm really pleased with them. The cover blew off this bed again last night. The chicory, the beetroot is all just lying down. It's given up and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically. The poor darlings are suffering. But we'll get that cover back on before we leave tonight. Now, this is something that's really surprised me. This is the chimney wrapper. It's just, like, frostbitten, basically. So, end of last week, this is what it looked like. Lush and green and beautiful and delicious. And... We just sort of started getting into proper picking of it and now it looks like this. We've still got a couple of stems, which will be all right. So we'll pick them. But I really genuinely don't know if this is going to recover. I mean, that's just crisped. But like I say, I've never known weather like this in London, so I don't have any experience of what's really going to bounce back or not. However, the broad beans look <laughs> terrible, absolutely terrible. But I know they always do in the cold. They do bounce back. But look at this. These ones were trying to flower. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I put a picture of them up last week when they were looking decidedly more alive. But yeah, all sort of trying to flower. Bit early there, chaps. Bit early. 
The blackcurrant, which we are yet to get into the fruit cage, is budding up quite nicely. That's really appreciated being put in that pot, actually, with loads of um, organic matter. It's really taken to that. More sad brassicas. Unfortunately, the uh, Romanesco cauliflowers really didn't appreciate the cold look. They've just... Yeah. They've gone completely, which is such a shame. We got two quite good ones out of here, but the rest of them have blown. But I'm definitely going to do them again next year because I was well impressed with them. Something that is completely undefeated by the cold, the wonderful Cavalinero. Just can't go wrong with it. Tough as anything. Even the curly curly is crispy. Look at that. It looks like, you know, deep fried seaweed. The pak choy, which have up until now been absolutely fine, I think have given up the ghost. So we might just have to pick that over the next couple of days before it turns to mush. And there's a mum in the greenhouse. <laughs> what temperature is it in there? 27.6. It's a darn sight warmer in there than it is out here. So we have got some pak choy coming along in there looking pretty healthy. We've also got land cress not no. looking so healthy. No. I really, really should have planted that out a lot earlier, but um, I didn't get around to it. Yes. We've got some mixed salad, which is doing absolutely fine and what's that one? Oh, a single coriander plant <laughs> a single one yeah I'm pretty jealous of her being in there yeah so the poor girls are still locked inside because of the avian flu outbreak they are not happy about it they're also looking extremely fluffy because of the weather. Hey, Wellers. Papa. Mm -hmm. Whirly whirlies. Chilly girlies. So this is quite interesting as a year on year comparison. It is the 13th of February today and this is the rhubarb that I'm forcing. And this is the 15th of February last year. Right? So it's really good. Look at it now. No, that is not coming out. This year has just been so much colder. So much colder. So along here, I put these arches in last week. If you watched the vlog last week, they went in then. I'm yet to build the boxes around the bottom, but I've got to get on that probably this week if it warms up a bit. Although I think what's happening next is it's getting warmer again, but it's just going to rain for five days. So not much fun working in the rain. So these are Canaliculata and Narcissus, one of my favourites. We've got this very sad looking Erica, but it is flowering. I've got to get that in the ground, actually. And some more daffs across here. They're going to be planted under here, under the mulberry tree. All the apples are starting to bud. You can see the sap's rising and they're getting ready to launch into growth. This is the little ballerina one doing the same. I think I can hear the kettle boiling, so uh, I'm going to head into the shed now. Okay, oh, it's cold out there. Just walking around holding the camera, my fingers are absolutely numb. I'm going to have this cup of tea and then uh, we're going to put the cover back on the bed that it's blown off again and um, probably head home actually because there's not a great deal you can do when the ground is this frozen. And I want to sow some celery. Um, that's gonna be, I've got to film for the vlog this afternoon, so I'm probably gonna be doing a bit of seed sowing this afternoon. 
Um, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So if you've got anything nice planned, I hope it's uh, lovely. That's all I've got to say about that, really. <laughs> Nothing's going to be happening, is it? Uh, unless, obviously, you live with your Valentine, with your spouse or other half or whatever you want to call them. So, yeah, a bit of a change from the January plot tour, isn't it? Some things are looking so cold. But I'm, I've got high hopes that most of them are going to kind of bounce back again, so that's not too bad. I don't think the Pak Choi is going to bounce back. I've got to um, just lay that out there for you. I think that's a goner. But the Pak Choi that's in the greenhouse is looking really good, so we're going to be able to replace that. And I've got more Pak Choi started at home, so they're going to be probably too early to ever be outdoor crops but we're going to plant them into the polytunnel or the greenhouse or whatever and have them that way but yeah basically it's blooming cold and that was february on the plot so yeah it'll be saturday when this comes out i will see you on tuesday see you later chaps <laughs> It's cold.